1974 was a crazy year film wise. That whole seventies period was crazy, but 1974, you had Godfather part two. I think the conversation might've came out with Gene Hackman, Lenny with Dustin Hoffman, uh, Uptown Saturday night, uh, Foxy Brown, Texas Chainsaw. It was, it was just a crazy year. And, and, and two of the best comedies ever came out in 1974. I mean, I love Uptown Saturday Night, but Mel Brooks, he dropped Blazing Saddles in February of 1974, and he dropped Young Frankenstein in December 1974. You would think that would have came out in October, <laughs> but it came out in December 1974. And it, I can argue that it's the greatest horror comedy of all time. Now, you can argue Scary Movie, Shaun of, Shaun of the Dead. Like, there's other films, uh, comedic films, that you can say is funnier. But for me, the timing of it, the look of it, Young Frankenstein to me is, was Oscar caliber. And too bad they stopped giving out Oscars to uh, comedies way back in the day because it definitely deserved that. So yeah, the point person was, was of course, Mel Brooks. Um, but it's the cast. Gene Hackman, Madeline Kahn, Marty Feldman, Peter Boyle, and Terry Gar, I get to Terry Gar in a second. Let's get let's let's start from the beginning. Like Matt, okay. So <laughs> Gene Hackman was the number two guy in Blazing Saddles because Blazing Saddles was Ke uh, Cleavon Little, which is supposed to be in Richard Pryor because Richard Pryor co-wrote uh, Blazing Saddles with Mel Brooks. But the studios was kind of you know Rick Richard's uh, extracurricular activities. They weren't sure if uh, Richard would be on the set all the time, so they went with Cleavon Little. But Cleavon was fine. But Gene was his deputy. So you take Gene, who was a number two in that film, and then he becomes the lead as Dr. Frankenstein, right? But he has that whole look, like he has a very 1920s, 1930s Douglas Fairbanks look about him. Because I think Maya Rudolph from SNL said, you know, uh, he was a, the sexiest he ever see ever seen a guy was uh, was Gene uh, Gene Wilder and Young Frankenstein. It's like yeah, he was pretty suave in that film. So now he's the lead as Frankenstein. You have Madeline Kahn. My mom loved Madeline Kahn. Madeline Kahn was a great combination of she could be seductive, she could be goofy, she could be pretty, she could be, she could be crazy. Like Madeline Kahn, I think, is one of the most unheralded, at this point now, one of the most unheralded comedic actresses of all time. Again, she was in Blazing Saddles because she played a harlot of, cho of choice. Like she's played a Miss Kitty type from Gunsmoke. Uh, and she was very seductive, seductive, very funny. And then Young Frankenstein, she not only played Gene Wilder's fiance, but she ends up being like a version of the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> One of the best parts is like when Peter Boyle is the monster, kidnaps her, and then he takes her to uh, this place. And she said, what are you doing? Stop. Oh. <laughs> and then she starts singing. <laughs> it's fantastic. And she has a fantastic voice too. Like, man, shout out to Madeline Kahn. She passed away many years ago, uh, the cancer. You had Marty Feldman. Marty Feldman played Igor, you know, there's two things when they asked him, like, I think Gene said, oh, that that's a nice hump you got. He says, what hump? And then the other part where he, uh, the, Dr. Frankenstein sends him to get the, uh, uh, get a brain for the monster. And he comes back. And then when the monster comes to life, he tries to choke out uh, Gene. Uh, and he, and he said, Igor, uh, when I said you get the brain, what, what was the name on it? And uh, <laughs> Marty Feldman was like, uh, Abby something. He said, Abby something. I think it's Abby Normal. <laughs> yeah, man. It's the timing of it. The time you don't have that timing anymore, man, when it comes to comedy because you're not expecting it. <laughs> he said Abby so it's so good. And Peter Boyle's the monster. He didn't have any words. Uh and then, you know, and then when he first wakes up, he looked like a baby. Because, like, you know, Gene was like, oh, look at him. And he's sitting there like this. Like how babies, when you look at a baby in a crib, the baby's looking at you like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Like, <laughs> that was fantastic. And then we have Terry Gar. Terry Gar. Terry Gar. And the reason I'm talking about Terry Gar last is that she recently passed away. And Terry Gar, I think she was in the conversation. And then Terry Gar would later be. Um, and Mr. Mama Michael Keaton. Uh, she'll be in Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman. Like, the thing about Terry Gar, oh, yeah, she was a frequent guest on David Letterman. So frequent where people actually thought her and Dave dated. Now, Dave was in a relationship 
first with the woman who, who he kind of co-wrote the show with, you know, his, you know, he's, but Dave was married and then he met uh, a writer and they were, they were a long time couple and then he married. And then when they broke up, he got with another writer, but a lot of people felt like Dave and Terry Gar were a couple. And you, when you watch those old interviews, definitely there was a chemistry there. And Terry, knowing that Dave was already in a relationship, she kind of really flirted hard with him. But man, part of me feels like Dave, I know you're in a relationship, but she's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Gar was nice. Terry Gar was like, uh, she's like that hot teacher. That that's that teacher you were in high school. It's like, oh my god, uh, Miss So and So is so pretty. Or or she's like the at the, P, the all the PTA moms, and all the moms look fine. But then then that one mom walks in, and like all the moms hate her. It's like, why does she look so good? <laughs> that's what Terry Terry Gar is almost like. I hate that whole turn next girl next door thing but it's like she is like she's she's like the hot mom on the block like but she was but she was equally as funny like Madeline Kahn had a certain speed with her comedy but Terry Gar she, her comedy was very subtle and the magic that she had with Gene Wilder um and Young Frankenstein where she played his assistant you know is, is amazing oh yeah and Cloris Leachman too Cloris Leachman was flying blood and then the, and then the horses would would, <laughs> would get wild and and, the, and there was thunder and lightning and all that stuff but yeah Terry Gar Terry Gar was just one of those. There's certain actors who are like glue actors, right? Like Phil Hartman on Saturday Night Live was a glue actor. It doesn't matter what sketch you put Phil Hartman in, in no matter if he's the lead or just in a, or just part of it, he makes it funny. And Terry Gar was the same way. At one point, you can put Terry Gar in just about anything. You know you're going to get a really good performance. If you maybe if, it's, if you need more drama, she can do it. If you need more comedy, she can do it. Like she's actually just a very underrated comedic actress, and I think she got off. I think she started um, on an Elvis film. I think Viva Las Vegas. She was a dancer or something like that on that. So I mean, she really worked her way up. And then you, I kind of miss hearing those stories where a young actor or actress worked their way up into the success. It wasn't like Al Pacino woke up and just got Godfather off the bat. Like he, he was in stage plays and all that stuff. He worked his way up. Like I think a lot of times they throw young actors into the mix and expect them to be great all of a sudden. And sometimes you need that growth. And Terry and and, uh, and Terry Gar was able to grow as an actress. And by the time she gets to Blazing Saddle, I mean, I'm not saying, by the time she gets to Young Frankenstein, she's 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 right there with Gene Wilder. She's right there with Cloris Leachman. She's right there with uh, Marty Feldman. Shout out to Marty Feldman's eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I know he was teased as a kid for his eyes, but they became his moneymaker down the road. So shout out to Terry Gar. Shout out to Young Frankenstein. Shout out to Mel Brooks. The way Mel Brooks shot that movie, black and white, he shot exactly how they shot those 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 Frankenstein, Dracula films, those Boris, Kar Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi films, Lon Chaney films back in the day. He shot it exactly like that. There's a part of me that would like to see a color version of Young Frankenstein just to see what it looked like. But from a, but just the, the, the way it looked, like Mel Brooks is just... If there's a guy who deserved just a regular film director Oscar, not an honorary Oscar, but an Oscar for directing is Mel Brooks. I mean, like in the beginning, I was talking about all these films that came out, you know, um, 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 The Conversation, um, Godfather. And, you know, of course, of course, Godfather won. But you know what? Mel Brooks deserved to be at least be in contention uh, with Francis Ford Coppola. Like to be able to put out two films like Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein, both different uh, in look, but they're both in both both of different writers on it. Mel's consistent, but there was different writers on both and have them both pitch perfect is amazing. So what's your favorite all-time funny, scary movie? I like Young Frankenstein, but I also like the Waynes Brothers, you know, the Waynes Brothers with Scary Movie. And they're supposed to come, they're coming back. Like the, 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 the Weinsteins kicked out the Waynes Brothers. They thought they could do the scary, franchise, scary movie franchise on their own. They couldn't. So Keenan, Sean, and Marlon are back for the next scary movie. We'll see if uh, Anna Ferris and Regina Hall would be back. I think they will. They're not doing... I think they, I think they have room in their schedule to come back for scary movie six. But what's your favorite all time funny scary movie?